What is up gamers? I am John Jonah and this is Archaeology 301. Okay, so this is going to be the training guide for level 70 to 90 or in other words, the professor qualification. This particular video is going to assume that you have unlocked everything when it comes to the mysteries as you've went along in your training. If you haven't, you can please refer to my mysteries guide in the description below. Now the very first thing you want to do at level 70 is unlock the auto screener as soon as possible. I know in my last video I was giving you guys pros and cons between the auto screener and the soil box. I have come to realize that the Auto screener is going to be the best item to increase your XP per hour. The reason being it avoids the need of having to return to the guild in order to screen all of your soil. Now once you unlock the blueprints for the auto screener, you're going to need a lot of invention materials in order to craft it. Once you have your auto screener, be sure to purchase or create enough divine charges to add to your charge pack. During your training, you can always check your auto screener to see how much divine charge you have left in your charge pack. As always, please consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already. Your support would be a great help to me as I try to reach my goal of a thousand subscribers. And with that, let's get started. So right at level 70, you're going to be at the Stormguard Citadel, excavating from the Icovian Memorial. It's very important that you only excavate here until you obtain an Icovian Greege. Once you obtain it, you will need to restore it and immediately add it to your tool belt. Once added, you can teleport to the Stormguard Citadel. Now you want to do that as quickly as possible because without it, you cannot teleport to the Citadel. Once here, carry on excavating at the Icovian Memorial that's located up here. You're going to be at this site until about level 72. While excavating here, there is a chance that instead of obtaining an artifact, you will obtain the Boots of Flight. Similar to the Echo of Ingrige, as soon as you obtain it, you don't need to restore it, you can just add it directly to your tool belt. And that's what's going to help you traverse these gaps that you'll find throughout the Citadel. Now, if by level 72 you still have not obtain the boots of flight don't worry about it at level 76 when you come back the boots are going to be a guaranteed drop one thing to note about the stormguard citadel just as Caradet offers a chance to excavate a pylon battery the stormguard citadel gives a chance to excavate torn blueprint fragments at level 95 once you've unlocked howell's workshop you can combine these fragments together to create the blueprints for Ancient Invention. I'll be covering these again in my next video, but essentially, if you want to craft the tradable blueprints for money-making purposes, you're going to need at least 300 fragments for each blueprint, or 250 fragments to create a random blueprint, which I would highly recommend you do, as the GE prices between the three different blueprints are not really that far off. If your interest is solely on unlocking the three different blueprints, all you need is about 450 fragments in order to craft three random untradeable blueprints at 150 fragments each. The nice thing about this is you cannot craft duplicate untradeable versions. So all you really need to do is craft three random untradeable blueprints to unlock all of them. From level 72 to 74, you're going to be at Everlight, excavating the Oikos Studio Debris, located here. You will need to take this shortcut in order to get to this location. From level 74 to 76, you're going to be at the Karadet Chapel Debris, that's located here on the first floor. At level 76, we see the very first instance where we unlock multiple excavation sites. This is the level where the Warforge will be unlocked, as well as a site at the Stormguard Citadel. At the Warforge, you can descend into the Crucible. Once down here, head to the very bottom, 
where you can start excavating the gladiatorial goblin remains. This particular excavation site is a very important one, as it's one of the two sites needed in order to farm Tetra Compass pieces. One thing to keep in mind as you're excavating at the Warforge is that you will have a rare chance of excavating an Imkando metal fragment. There are four fragments in total. You will require each of them to transform a Dragon Maddock into an Imkando Maddock. The chances of receiving an Imkando fragment is unaffected by any luck enhancers. For now, stay at this excavation site until you've unlocked all three artifacts and contributed all of them to their collections. Once you've done so, make your way then to the Stormguard Citadel. Once here, if you still have not unlocked your Boots of Flight, continue at the Icovian Memorial until the blue bar reaches max. Once it does, instead of obtaining an artifact, you will obtain the Boots of Flight. Equip them immediately and traverse the gap. By traversing the second gap, you will unlock the mystery Leap of Faith. Once on the main island, head over to this location to excavate at the Keshek Gur. Stay here until about level 81. At level 81, we see the second instance where we unlock multiple excavation sites. They will be the Infernal Source, Caradet, Stormguard, and Warforge. You can do these in any order you wish, as long as you start with the Infernal Source and end with the excavation site that benefits you the most. Meaning if you're interested in pylon batteries for XP purposes, leave Caradet as your last site. If you care about blueprint fragments, you leave Stormguard as your last site. Or if you care about Imkando Maddock pieces, you leave Warforge as your last site. At the Infernal Source, you're going to be at the Vestibule of Futility, excavating at the Animal Trophies, located just here. At Caradet, you're going to be at the Pontifex Remains. Please be sure to have your Pontifex Signet Ring either on your tool belt or in your inventory in order to pass through the barrier. At the Stormguard Citadel, you're going to be at the Tailory Debris located just southeast of the Keshek Gur debris. At the Warforge, you're going to be at the Crucible Stands debris, located on either side of the Gladiatorial Goblin remains. It's also worth mentioning that once you unlock all four Imkando pieces, you can go into your Game Settings menu under Skills and Experience, under Archaeology, and you can toggle this selection on or off to either stop receiving Imkando pieces or to continue receiving them. Just if you want to create multiple Imkando Maddox. So you're going to stay at those excavation sites until about level 83. Once at level 83 you're going to be back at the Warforge and you're going to excavate the barricade on this door. By doing so you'll be able to enter the Warforge tunnels. The first time you click enter the tunnel entrance, you will be asked to go left or right. Doesn't matter which option you choose, it all ends up in the same place. But you're eventually going to need to choose both at one point in order to collect the key required for the mystery into the forge. In either case, by heading down the tunnel entrance, you will unlock the mystery out of the crucible. Once you're down in the tunnels, you may notice that this place is a little bit of a maze and it will take a little bit of getting used to to figure out your way around. But for now, you want to make your way to this location in order to excavate the Goblin Dorm Debris. On your map, it's just located here in these south tunnels. This excavation site is also worth keeping in mind as it is going to be the second out of the two spots needed in order to farm your Tetra Compass pieces. From level 84 to 85, you're going to be at the Oikos Fishing Hut Remnants, located here at Everlight. From level 85 to 86, you will be at the Weapons Research Debris at the Stormguard Citadel, located just here. In order to get here, you will have needed to solve the Wing Out mystery to unlock the Wingsuit, 
or unlock the inactive Stormguard portal. I'll be going over how to do these in the Mysteries Guide. From level 86 to 89, you will be at the Orcus Altar, located in the Caridet Chapel on the first floor. Please be sure to have your Pontifex Signet Ring on hand in order to pass through the barrier. At level 89, we see another instance where we unlock multiple sites. One at the Infernal Source, and another at the Warforge. I would recommend doing the one at the Infernal Source first, and in order to get there you're going to want to head down to the Harrowing. Once here, make your way towards the southeastern section, and excavate at the Dis Overspell. Stay here until you've uncovered all of the artifacts and satisfied all of your collections. Once you're done with that, head down to the Warforge. At the Warforge, head down to the tunnels and go to the northernmost section and excavate at the Big High War God Shrine. I particularly love this site because the three artifacts that you can uncover here only require the materials provided by this excavation spot and each of the three artifacts require the exact same quantity of materials needed to restore them. And it's pretty good XP here too. So I'd highly recommend staying here until level 91. But once you reach level 90, you're essentially going to be done, and you can now work on obtaining that professor qualification. So at level 90, you should be completed the Collector's Assemble, as well as the Researcher and the Mystery Solver. However, the only thing that might be left over is the Discoverer and the Restorer. So with that, I'm going to talk about two repeatable collections that you can do in order to finish those off. If you guys recall from the first video, the repeatable collection we did was Zerosian 1. Well, now that we're level 90, we can go ahead instead and do Ceridominist 1. By completing this collection once, you will achieve approximately 9k in Chronotes and just a little over 14k in Archaeology XP. The requirements for this collection can be seen on your screen now, with the bottom right showing you all of the materials you're going to need to restore all of the artifacts. So be sure to compare those numbers with your material storage box and gather whatever amount of materials you might be missing. During your restoration, if you are wearing your full archaeologist gear, you will gain an extra 900 XP for completing this collection. So once that's all done, you go ahead and you contribute it, and you'll earn just 5 chronotes less than 9k. The other collection that's worth keeping in mind is the Green Gobbo Goodies 1. This is your very first collection that you can unlock by level 83 that allows you to farm Tetra Compass pieces. I highly recommend during your excavation to uncover four of each artifact so that when you contribute to this collection four times, you'll essentially unlock a full Tetra Compass. The requirements for this collection can be seen on your screen now, with the bottom right section showing you the list of materials that you're going to need. One contribution to this collection will not only give you a Tetra Compass piece, but it will also give you 34.5k archaeology XP, and it will give you 6.5k in chronotes. So if I were you, I would prioritize this collection over the Ceridominist one. Once you have your four sets of collections, make your way to the Goblin Village north of Falador. Once here, talk to General Wartface and contribute to the Green Gobbo Goodies 1 collection. By contributing four times, you will collect one full Tetra Compass, fragmented into its four pieces, as well as 26k in Chronotes. Now, in order to craft the full compass, you will not only need each of the four pieces, but you will also need 30 of each colored soil as they correspond to each of the five dig sites. If you're crafting a bulk amount of Tetra Compass pieces, I would recommend buying the five different soils from the GE. I personally think buying them is the better option, because if it's going to cost me about 5 to 7 mil to craft all five compasses, 
I'm pretty sure I can make that money back when I excavate them. Once you have all your tetra compasses ready to go, head to the platform next to the monolith and click on the compass to power them. Once you have all your compasses powered up, you can observe it to figure out the location of the excavation site. This compass puzzle is typical of what you would see in treasure trails when trying to solve the elite clue scrolls. I'm going to solve one with you just to show you how it's done. The idea is very similar to what you would find in a CSI type of movie or show. You're going to use triangulation. Now all that means is the compass is pointing in this general direction. So in order to figure out where the treasure is buried, you're essentially going to teleport to different spots on your map in the shape of a triangle. By doing this, it will help you narrow down the precise location. So just to show you what that looks like, the compass is currently pointing southwest. So I'm going to draw a line to the nearest area, which I would say is about Port Sarum. I'm going to teleport there. Okay, the compass is still pointing southwest, so I'm going to carry on. This time I'm going to head all the way to Yanil, which is approximately southwest of Port Sarum. Okay, so now at Yanil, the compass changes direction. Now it's pointing southeast. So that'll either be towards Uglog or Apatol. For simplicity's sake, we'll go to Uglog first. Okay, and now with such a drastic change in such a short distance, we can conclude that the excavation spot is somewhere in this general area. So now all I have to do is just run there manually. And as the compass starts to change direction, I will also change the direction of where I'm going. Okay, so now we know that generally it will be in this location. And then once you start seeing those drastic changes in the compass, take small steps and you found it. Now I'm going to carry this on for the rest of the compasses that I have. And then I'm going to loot all of my ancient caskets with you on video. Okay, now that we have a small handful of ancient caskets, we can go ahead and start opening them up. As we open them up, we're going to keep a lookout for some of the more coveted items, such as the Dragon Maddock which has a 1 in 100 chance of dropping, as well as the Distorted Key, which has roughly 1 in 1,000 chance of dropping, and the Shadow Key, which has a 1 in 10,000 chance of dropping. Now, the Distorted Key and the Shadow Key are both used to unlock this display case, which gives you access to Guildmaster Tony's Maddock, one of the four hero items in RuneScape. Now the difference between the Distorted Key and the Shadow Key is that the Shadow Key has a 100% success rate in unlocking the display case, while the Distorted Key has a 1 in 10 chance of unlocking the display case. Okay, our first Ancient Casket gives us approximately 4.8 mil. If you click the Bank All option, it will bank everything except for the complete tomes. Second Casket, not so much. Third casket, a little bit better. Fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and the last one, eighth. The biggest thing was collecting all of the complete tomes, which will greatly help when it comes to training. When it comes to our profit margin, we made about 10 mil just based off the materials alone. The thing is, when you unlock an ancient casket, it will also count to the value of the artifacts, even though they're untradeable. So best of luck to you as you hunt for your Tetra compasses. Now, once everything is all said and done, go ahead and collect your qualification. Once you've unlocked your professor qualification, you'll notice that you've unlocked a new special research expedition called Symbiology. Luckily, upon reaching your professor qualification, you would already unlock the associates at level 90. No need to do any special tasks to unlock these guys. 
And here you can see the new research expedition that you have. If you don't care about the duration and don't want to waste any more chronos than you have to, you can stick with the last three interns to run the expedition as they do not add to your cost modifier. Once you become a professor, one of the first things you should be doing is going straight to Asriel and unlocking the Madoc Precision Upgrade. Reason being is at level 90, everything is going to be much more difficult to excavate, so this is really going to help you out and make things go by a little bit faster. The Material Storage Upgrade, I would say, is the second priority, but you don't necessarily have to worry about getting this until about level 95. Soil Box Upgrade you can just get whenever you want because you're not even going to be using it as you should be using your auto screener instead. Alright, so this section is all about the relics that you're going to be unlocking for your professor qualification. There are six relics in total, starting off with Endurance at level 81, Farm Ecology at level 81, and Death Ward at level 81. Luck of the Dwarves is going to be at level 83, as well as Always Adds at level 83. And finally, Sticky Fingers at level 84. Now, to get things started with Endurance, we are going to need to complete the Smoky Fings collection. And upon doing so, Chief Tess will give you the Ooglog Wellspring. This, in and of itself, is a relic. So all you need to do is hand it into the Monolith to unlock Endurance. Next up is going to be the Farm Ecology Power. And in order to get started on that, you're going to have to complete the Armadillion 1 collection in order to collect King Obron's Mushroom Spore. You will then need to go to Zenaris with the Mushroom Spores and head over to the Fairy Queen, who's located in this little hut in the center of the city. Once here, all you have to do is give the Fairy Queen the Mushroom Spores and she will give you the relic Queen Mab's Moonstone. You take the relic to the monolith, and you will unlock Farm Ecology. The next power is going to be the Death Ward. In order to get started on this, you're going to need to come back to the Stormguard Citadel and excavate at the Tailory Debris, located here, until you obtain the Avancy Dream Coat. Once you restore the Dream Coat, make your way to the Armadil Tower just south of Falador. Climb up the stairs a couple times and give the dream coat to Armadil. In doing so, he will provide you with the Ring of Solomon. Offer the ring to the monolith to unlock Death Ward. Now, for the Luck of the Dwarves, you're going to need access to Thalamin's Forge. So if you haven't unlocked this area, please refer to the Mysteries section to help you through it. Once inside the forge, the hand is just sitting on the furnace area. Just click on it to collect it, and then head to the Grand Exchange. Now you can either buy the Luck of the Dwarves, or you can make it. Whichever works best for you, take the ring, use it on the Hand of Glory, and then you will get the NPC contact, Eris, which we've rudely interrupted her call with Meg. In this instance, you as the player are making sure you're doing the right thing by adding the Luck of the Dwarves to the Relic. Comedically, she gets very annoyed. <laughs> but that's her way of just saying that this is the last luck relic that you're going to be making. With the completed relic in hand, you can offer it to the monolith. Now, for the next relic, Always Adds, you're going to need access to the Flame Gloves. The Flame Gloves are obtained when you complete the all-fired-up minigame, lighting all of the main beacons within a certain amount of time. In order to obtain the gloves in particular, you must light at least 10 beacons, making sure they stay lit up and not go extinguished. This relic will also require access to Thalamin's Forge, so if you haven't unlocked this area, please refer to the Mysteries section to help get you through it. In order to obtain the relic, we'll need to go to the back of the forge 
and attempt to smith at the Imkando Anvil. In doing so, the player will discover the seed of the Charyu tree. Make sure to equip your flame gloves, and then you may activate the seed. Once that's done, you'll be able to offer this to the monolith. Now, the last relic we can unlock is going to be Sticky Fingers. To start things off, we are going to need to excavate at the Oikos Fishing Hut Remnants, located here, until we obtain the Dominarian device. Once you restore the device, give it over to Reldu, in the Varrock Castle Library, and he will give you the Andveranaut Relic. Offer the relic to the monolith, and you will unlock Sticky Fingers. So, for the mysteries, we're mainly going to be covering the ones related to the Stormguard Citadel, which is Atonement, Leap of Faith, The Spy Who Loved Metal, Wing Out, which unlocks your wingsuit all the way to version 3. And finally, a study in Aether. The last mystery can be unlocked at level 95. This mystery allows you to unlock Ancient Invention. We're also going to cover the Warforge, which is the first commander, out of the Crucible, Warforge, and into the Forge, which I haven't completed yet, as I will be doing that with you. The last two will be covered at level 100 and 110. We're also going to be covering the Epic of Hebe at Everlight, as well as the Cult of Orcus at Caridet. You can also use the timestamps in the description below to fast forward to a particular mystery that you're most interested in. To start things off at the Stormguard Citadel, in order to unlock Atonement, you have to uncover the Exile's Vow, which can be excavated at the Icovian Memorial, either on the surface or in the Citadel itself, once you've uncovered and restored an Icovian Greege. Once you've uncovered the page, talk to Jika to claim your reward. The second mystery, Leap of Faith, is started once you've recovered and restored an Icovian Greege and arrived at this area. You will then need to excavate at these particular excavation spots to try and uncover the Boots of Flight. In this instance, the Boots of Flight are treated as an artifact, and you will uncover them once the blue bar reaches max. If by level 72 you still have not uncovered the Boots of Flight, I recommend carrying on with your training and then coming back here at level 76. At level 76, your first artifact discovery will automatically be the Boots of Flight. So don't worry if it's taking you a while. Once you've uncovered them, there's no need to restore it. You just add it to your tool belt and traverse these first couple gaps. By traversing both gaps, you automatically solve the Leap of Faith. For the next mystery, The Spy Who Loved Metal, you will need to uncover three mission reports which can be obtained from the Keshik Gur excavation spot at level 76, or the Tailory Debris at level 81. Once you've uncovered all three mission reports, talk to Jika to solve the mystery. Okay, now for the most important mystery, Wing Out. Solving this will unlock your wingsuit and all necessary upgrades. Now from level 76 to 95 you only need wingsuit version 2, but I'm going to show you how to unlock version 3, as it's something you'll eventually need to do anyway, you might as well just get it out of the way now. On your screen now you're going to see a map of the Stormguard Citadel, and all the different locations that you're going to need to visit in order to get your wingsuit and its upgrades. I highly recommend pausing the video here if you need to refer to this map. And you can also refer to the timestamp in the description below to come back to it should you need to. For starters, in order to get the wingsuit, you will need to come to the northeastern section 
and you will find it lying just here. You will need to claim it, and then like any artifact, restore it. The materials for which are on your screen now. And once you do, you can go ahead and add it to your tool belt. You'll notice mine said version 3, you can ignore that. All the upgrades you do will be from within your tool belt. Once you have your wingsuit, you can go ahead and leap at the bridge edge and head directly south. Once you're on the southern island, come to this area. You will find a rope that you can climb down. And down here you will find the lightning conductor. Once you've added that, take the rope to climb back up. Now from the south island, we are going to head northwest to this island. Please note that if you are struck with an electrical charge from one of these generators, you will crash and fall back down to the surface. So try to avoid them until you get your lightning conductors. Once you're on the island, you're going to want to head northwest and climb down this rope. Once down here, you will find the lightning conductor resting on this box. Once you've added that, you can climb the rope back up. And you will now be immune to the electrical charges from these generators. Once you've unlocked version 2 of the wingsuit, now it's time for version 3. Similar to the lightning rods, it doesn't matter which upgrade you collect first. For now, I'm going to head to the night guard tower, which is just northwest. Once here, circle around the tower to find the Gravitron Repulsor sitting on this box. Once you've equipped that, we can make our way to the Day Guard Tower. Now, you could either teleport back down to the Citadel Portal to start from there and make the trip a little bit faster, or if you're lazy, you can just head there manually. You might even find some floating blueprint fragments as you're flying around. Once you arrive at the Day Guard Tower, you will find the Gravitron Repulsor right in front, sitting on this box. Once you pick that up, you will automatically unlock Wingsuit version 3. And this mystery will be solved. Now that you have your Wingsuit, there's one quality of life trick that we're going to need to do. At the GE, make sure to buy 80 Quint Essences. This particular material can only be excavated at level 91, so you are going to need to purchase them on the GE. The Quint Essences are going to be used to activate these portal platforms that are located all throughout the Stormguard Citadel. These portals make traveling through the Citadel much easier than using your wingsuit all the time. You will require 70 divination to activate each portal, so if you don't have that yet, I would suggest holding off. It's also worth noting these Quint Essences cannot be noted, and they cannot be withdrawn from your material storage box. They have to be in your inventory in order to activate the portal. So because of that, I made a little map for you guys to reference the quickest route to activating all of the portals. You first take the white path to portal number one, activate it, and then use that portal to head down to the surface. Once there, collect another 20 quintessence in your inventory and head back to portal number one. From there you can go to portal number two and so on and so forth. For portal number four I would recommend starting from the main citadel portal and taking the green path to head up there. As always you can pause the video here to refer to the map or use the timestamps in the description below to come back to it if you need to. You also unlock an achievement. The last mystery is going to be a study in Aether at level 85. In order to get there, you can use your portals to head to the northwest location and excavate at the weapons research debris. Stay here until you've uncovered all five of the journal pages. Once you have, head back down to the surface and talk to Jika to solve the mystery. Okay, now it's time for the Warforge. Our first mystery is going to be the First Commander. You will need to uncover all five of these journal pages. 
by excavating at the gladiatorial goblin remains at level 76, or the crucible stands debris at level 81. By the time you're able to excavate here, you should have all five pages uncovered. Once you've got them all, you can talk to Zanuck to solve the mystery. The next mystery is going to be out of the crucible. Very simple. At level 83, there's going to be a barricade here. All you have to do is excavate that barricade and enter the tunnel's entrance. Upon your first entry, you will be given an option to go either left or right. You can pick either option, they will all lead you to the same spot. You can also excavate the barricade at level 81, provided you use the Archaeology Booster Cup of Soil Tea, the ingredients for which are on your screen now. Once that's done, your next mystery is going to be Forge War at level 89, which technically, most likely, you would complete after you complete Into the Forge as this mystery is level 83. But for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to go in order. To solve the Forge War mystery, you're going to want to head to the North Tunnels. While here, you only need to uncover one journal page, so excavate at the Big High War God Shrine at level 89 until you uncover the one journal page that you need. Once you have, talk to Zanuck to solve the mystery. All right, now for the last important mystery of the associate rank, into the forge. The forge is referring to Thalamin's forge, which is just past this door, right over here. And in order to unlock this door, you will require 12 different keys. The good news is, one of those 12 keys is already inside the door, so you only need to collect 11. Our first key is going to be the Horo Gothgar, which can be excavated at the Gladiatorial Goblin Remains. The key is excavated as though it was a material. The second key, Drogokashen, can be collected once the barricade goes down. Upon entering the tunnel, you will be asked to go in one of two directions, left or right. In order to collect the key, you will need to eventually choose both options. You will need to go down once, in one direction, come back up, and go back down in the other direction. Once the game realizes that you've gone both ways, you will unlock the second key. The third key is going to be the Hazamagarb key which can be collected in this area. Here you can either excavate the Goblin Dorm Debris or the nearby Material Cache. The next key is going to be the Sarah Gorgok key, which can be found in this area. And you can either excavate at the Big High War God Shrine if you are level 89, or you can use the nearby Material Cache sites if you are still only level 83. The next key is going to be the Garagorshan key, and in order to obtain it, you will either need to fish for eels or for cave fish. The two predominant fishing sites are here and here. I would personally suggest fishing at the eel swarm, as you will not require any bait to fish here. You will require at least level 28 fishing in order to unlock this key. For the next key, we will be back in the south tunnels, and in order to obtain it, we can mine either the copper, tin, or necrite rocks. I would suggest either the copper or the tin, as you will be mining ore a lot faster, which increases your chance of finding the key. While you're here, make your way to the southeast tunnel entrance, and with level 35 Dungeoneering, you can enter the tunnel. There will be a small cutscene, and when he comes back out, he obtains the key upon exit. The next tunnel entrance will be in the southwest corner, located here. It won't let me go back in because I've already collected it. You will need to use this tunnel again eventually at level 97 for the sake of crafting a relic. From here, make your way to the western side of the tunnels. And again with level 35 Dungeoneering, enter this tunnel entrance to collect the Narrow Goshen Key. While you're in this area, you will see the Southern Forge Doors attempt to open it. 
and by doing so you will collect the Yurkol Gok key. For the last key, you will need to head to the northwestern area of the tunnels. Once here, you will need to head to the northwest tunnel entrance. And in doing so, you will collect the final key. This tunnel entrance will be used again for the sake of a relic at level 97. Now, with all the keys in your inventory, head back to the forge doors. And place all the keys in the door. Enter the forge, and once inside, pull this lever. Once done, you would have completed the mystery. You can also pull this lever near the south doors to open them up. Now you'll have access to the forge on either side. Couple things to note about the forge. It does have fully functioning anvils and heaters, so you can train your smithing here. There is also three player achievements that you can complete related to the forge. The first one is Epi Re Dri Voli, cooking Thalamin's favorite dish within Thalamin's forge, which is going to be the red berry pie. All you have to do is get an uncooked berry pie, and then cast the lunar spell Bake Pie. You can also complete Goblin Tutorial, which requires you to smith a bronze dagger from scratch within the forge. As you saw, there are copper and tin rocks available, so this is a very easy achievement to complete. Finally, you're going to have Tasty Pastry. In order to understand how to solve this, I should mention, upon entering the forge for one minute, a randomly selected dwarf NPC will appear. There's a 1 in 4 chance that it's going to be Thurgo. If it's not, exit the forge and come back in to try again. Once Thurgo appears, you can hand him your red berry pie to unlock this achievement. Finally, you can also obtain two relics for the associate qualification inside the forge, but I will be covering those in the relics section of the guide. Please see the description below to forward you to that section. The next mystery is unlockable at level 100, and Heart of the Forge unlockable at level 110. Now that we've finished all the important mysteries from the two main dig sites, we can make our way towards Everlight. Once at Everlight, we will be solving the Door of Babel, which requires us to uncover all four Archon journal pages. To do so, you can excavate at the Oikos Studio Debris at level 72, or the Oikos Fishing Hut Remnants at level 84. Once you have all the pages, speak to Veneskula to solve the mystery. The next mystery, the Epic of Hebe, can be solved at level 92, and the last two mysteries can both be solved at level 105. The last mystery we're going to cover today is going to be the Cult of Orcus at Karadet. In order to solve it, you will need to uncover all three journal pages, which can be obtained from the Karadet Chapel Debris at level 74, the Pontifex Remains at level 81, or the Orcus Altar at level 86. Once you've uncovered all three pages, you can talk to Dr. Nabanik to solve the mystery. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the research expeditions that you can unlock between level 70 and level 90. So to get things started, in my last video when we were at Karadet, I talked about the research expedition called Lockdown that you would be able to unlock if you were able to study the vault doors. The expedition itself is level 58, so it was rather confusing when I wasn't able to figure out how we can even get here. It turns out there is a way to do it, but you would only be able to really figure it out at level 107. So here's what you need to do. Back at the prison block section, you will need to excavate from the Carcerum debris until you excavate the Incite Fear spell scroll. Be sure to restore the spell scroll and come back to the vault section. Over here we're gonna go to this dial. 
Now this dial, if you haven't um, if you haven't done it, would be empty, and all you have to do is stand in front of it and cast the spell scroll. When you do that, the dial will start to glow, and all you need to do is press it. Enter the vault, and now you'll be right in front of the doors, and you can study the central vault. Now that that's out of the way, we can get started on the Stormguard Citadel. The very first thing you can study is either the south or the north archways to unlock Icovian Tragedy at level 70. Now the rest of the special research here assumes that you've already unlocked your wingsuit and your boots of flight. So if you haven't done that yet, please refer to the mysteries section to figure out how to do that. For now, just off to the first island, we're going to study the Memorial Megalith, located here, to unlock Dearly Departed at level 81. For this next part, you're going to need version 2 of your wingsuit, and you're going to make your way over to the southeast area. At this location of the Citadel, you are going to study the War Golem Arm. This will unlock the Ethereum Giant at level 98. Our next stop is going to be directly north of us, towards the Night Guard Tower. Once at the Night Guard Tower, you're going to study the Keshek Coat of Arms to unlock Night and Day at level 95. And that's going to be all of the research expeditions you can unlock at the Stormguard Citadel for the Professor Qualification. There's going to be two expeditions left to unlock, but those we have to collect at level 95. Alright, our last stop is going to be the Warforge. As soon as you make your way down, the first thing you're going to be able to study is the Bandos Throne itself. Unlocking Power Behind the Throne at level 100. Next, you're going to make your way to the center of the crucible. And once you're down here, you can study the grill to unlock melting point at level 83. For the next expeditions, you're going to need access to the tunnels itself, as well as Thalamin's forge. So if you haven't unlocked those yet, please refer to the mystery section to help get you through it. Once in the tunnels, make your way to the northern section and once here you can study the big high war god shrine to unlock north side at level 97 from here you can make your way to Thalamin's forge and head to the back corner here and once here you want to study the hallmark symbol to unlock Dorvan Forge at level 97. From here, enter the southern doors. I also go over how to open those doors in the mystery section. And make your way a few steps from the door and study the animal skull. This will unlock too many bones at level 100. And that's going to be all for the research expeditions here. There is only one left to unlock, but we'll need to be level 100 to unlock it. So that's going to be all for this video, guys. Uh, I really hope it helped. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and if you did, please drop a subscribe if you haven't already. Your support would mean a great deal to me. Thank you so much, and I'll see you next time.